come along with me to visit the famous village of Avebury. It's time to see some really old rocks in a place that I think is more enjoyable to visit than Stonehenge. In this video, I'll show you the stones of Avebury from the sky and from the ground after first taking you around the charming and surprisingly not touristy village of Avebury. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you the uniquely beautiful Saxon church here in Avebury, which was an important point of departure for pilgrims in the Middle Ages. You may have noticed that in most of my travel vlogs, it's sunny and the skies are blue, which is not because it never rains in Britain, but there's two reasons. One is, I'm here in the summers, and let's face it, the weather is better in the summers. But the other reason is that when I have a chance, I go film on nicer days, when the weather is better. And if the weather is horrible, I try not to do a vlog that day. We have been driving through rain and gray and wet, drizzly, horrible visibility, but we're headed to Avebury up ahead on the horizon we see a glimmer of glowing sunlight we're hopeful <laughs> maybe it won't be so rubbish in Avebury arriving into Avebury Avebury is a busy place but a beautiful village this little lane is the high street, and that thatched building is the old bakery. Avebury really is a lovely little village. interesting to think about all the people who live in Avebury in the middle of a National Trust and UNESCO World Heritage Site. I love that the Rose Cottage has pretty roses in front of it and such a nice thatched roof. This home had lovely brickwork. The pattern almost seemed a bit like basket weave to me. Here is the aptly named Hinge Shop, where they sell clothing and jewelry and other mystical items having to do with Avebury. I didn't buy anything here, but I did pop into the food shop and buy three packets of Burt's Crisps, which I sat in my car and did a taste test of in last week's video. If you missed that, I'll put a link in the description for you to check it out. This is the manor that is closed for touring today, but is usually open. It's a National Trust property. Let's go check out the inside of this dovecote. Here is the inside of the dovecote, which has a big nest up there. Avebury has some interesting and unusual things, like I've never seen a wall with a thatched top on it before. I asked Ian to demonstrate how the kissing gate works, and this is him reluctantly cooperating. Well done, lad. And here is my brother and his wife who wanted to show how it's really done. While Avebury is a busy place with lots of visitors, it's also expansive and sprawling. So I never felt crowded or cramped when walking through the village or wandering around the stones. This is just beautiful with the sheep grazing right next to the stones in the stone circle. That's awesome. Avebury has the largest stone circle in the world. While its stones were put up around the same time as Stonehenge, it's much larger. This diagram shows Avebury's stone circle size in comparison to Stonehenge. The stone circle, or henge, together with the standing stones, bank, and ditch which surround them, makes this a fascinating location to visit stones that have stood in place for 4,500 years. Avebury is not just one stone circle. There are circles within circles and lines and stones all over. 
And what I love is that unlike Stonehenge, which is now cordoned off and you can't walk up next to the stones anymore, you can walk all around the rocks here in the stone circle of Avebury. It's a mystery why the stones of Avebury were placed here, but it's likely that it was a ceremonial site for sacred rituals. You can see that many of the stones are missing from the complete circle that was originally put in place. Unfortunately, about 300 years ago, many of the stones were pulled down and broken up to be used as building material, if you can believe it. So many of the walls and buildings around Avebury are likely to contain some of these prehistoric stone fragments. Though the stones of Stonehenge are larger than at Avebury, these still are some pretty big old rocks, which makes it fun to pose next to them to show their immense size. Some of the stones are at odd angles or are in curious shapes. So use your imagination. What does this look like? I think it looks like an eagle. This clip shows the ditch and bank, which are part of the Avebury site. This was likely not a defensive ditch like the moat around a castle, but instead was there to denote that it was a special area of sacred significance. This is a very chalky path that you walk in between stone circles. My microphone has a dead mouse on it and I'm testing its ability to film within a very windy place. The sun on yonder field shines. I love this little thatched barn. And then look at these three sheep just all cuddled against the warm stone. Looks like someone was leaving an offering at this ancient stone. I didn't put it here, but I do need to film that there are magenta flowers. I love how the village is so close to all of these ancient stones. So here we have a line of stones next to this beautiful thatched barn. And just beyond it, the village church in the distance, which I want to go check out. Here on the site of the current parish church of St. James, there has been a place of worship since the third century AD. This is considered a special place because it is a church within a hinge. Therefore, it has been a place of pilgrimage for centuries. Let's go find the Saxon remains in this St. James's church. The door looks very Norman. There's a little bit of Saxon remaining architectural detail. And here in another part of the porch. The oldest part of the church standing today was built in the 9th century. Aisles were added in the 12th century, then widened in the 15th century. And the present arcade was created in 1812. This wooden balcony in the nave is the 15th century rood loft, one of the very few which have survived. It was removed probably early in the reign of Elizabeth I and carefully hidden behind a lathe and plaster covering against the east wall of the nave and was discovered there again in 1812 and was repainted. The wooden screen below the loft is Victorian. Here is the bell pole and we will not be pulling the bell. You will be relieved to know. There's one of the original round Anglo-Saxon windows. And two smaller round windows next to it. The church has lots of Anglo-Saxon elements to it, but it was also refurbished 300 years later and updated with perpendicular Gothic elements. This narrow spiral staircase was installed in the 1400s to allow the beetle access to the rood loft where the 17 candles were kept alight. And beetle is with a D, it's not like the Fab Four. And because that stairway is so narrow, I'm saying no big beetles were allowed. I think this little niche is where a candle would be put. Being recessed back in the wall allowed the candle to burn even if a cold draft was blowing through the church, as I'm sure it was back then. 
Anglo-Saxon window. Very thick walling around it. You can see these Gothic arches and then these much older looking windows and then bits of things that used to exist that have been broken apart during the updating. You can see these faces are from different eras or eras if you prefer. The font is from the early 1100s and on it is an interesting carving of two serpents with twisted tails. Their heads turn toward the figure of a bishop holding a crozier, a misrepresentation by the sculptor of Christ trampling on evil and sin. We followed the signs for this public footpath so we could find a nice field to launch the drone from, and I loved seeing this interesting cattle gate, and even better, this bridge with the fascinating contraption made of wood to keep cattle from crossing whilst still allowing nimble humans to cross. Thanks so much for joining us on our visit to Avebury today. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out this video if you want to see my favorite Neolithic stone circle in the Cotswolds. And here, if you'd like to see a prehistoric long barrow also in the Cotswolds. Thank you so much for watching and do something good in the world today.